China's Chip Counterattack, Building High-End Chips Without EUV Why does U.S. blockade lead to more breakthroughs? The U.S. allocated $280 billion to build its chip alliance and locked down the EUV lithography machine, treating it as a nuclear weapon for three years. Yet Huawei turned around and used old machinery, which had previously been dismissed, to produce 7NM Plus chips. It was done without the legendary, indispensable EUV. Even more disruptive, shortly after the good news from Huawei, domestic manufacturers announced that 80% of the key components for their 28 nanometers DUV lithography machines are now domestically produced, with a yield rate that is even more stable than those in European and American factories. The first secret behind this is understanding the difference between DUV and EUV. EUV is the precision scalpel, capable of etching circuits 1 tenth, 000th the width of a human hair. DUV is the ordinary scalpel, but we have equipped it with a precision navigation system. With the localization of key components, it's like fitting the old knife with laser aiming. For 28 nanometers chips, 90 or more out of every 100 wafers can be successfully produced. The demand for mid-range mobile phones and automotive chips is now completely stabilized. An even more audacious move came next. Huawei's 3D stacking technology completely changed the game. Instead of competing on the precision of etching circuits, it stacks four ordinary chips like building blocks to create a super chip, whose performance is on par with 7NM+, achieving a yield rate of 92%. In comparison, Intel, working on similar technology, has a yield rate barely above 50% and won't be able to supply parts until 2026. These two breakthroughs are not luck, they are a combined assault launched against the U.S. blockade. In this main text, we will dissect why can't Europe and the U.S. beat China by throwing money at the problem? And how big of a hole have we torn in their chip hegemony? 1. The U.S.'s blockade fiasco Let's start with the U.S.'s blockade joke. The Chips and Science Act, signed in 2022, boasted of investing $280 billion to bring manufacturing back home. Out of the $39 billion in manufacturing subsidies, Intel grabbed the largest chunk, $8.5 billion, and immediately cancelled its 30 billion euro factory in Germany. The new factory in Ohio, initially planned for 2022, was delayed until 2024 to start construction, with mass production not expected until 2030. In contrast, it took us less than two years to transition the 28 nanometers DUV from relying on imported parts to achieving 80% domestic production. The U.S. constantly claims it will choke us to death, but its own supply chain is already riddled with holes. TSMC's plant in Arizona has construction costs four times higher than in Taiwan and is struggling with a labor shortage. The mass production of 5 nanometers chips, originally set for 2024, has been forcefully postponed to a trial production in the first half of 2025. Our domestically produced DUV, however, is already running stably on SMIX production lines, capable of manufacturing hundreds of wafers per hour. The most ironic case is ASML. The Dutch company, which the US treats as a pawn, saw 42% of its sales revenue in the third quarter of 2025 come from China a 15 percentage point increase over the previous year. They publicly state they must comply with U.S. restrictions, yet they quietly move their maintenance center to Beijing for fear of losing the Chinese market. The U.S. tried to restrict us by monopolizing EUV but forgot that China has already built up the DUV market. Analysis The U.S. blockade logic is fundamentally flawed. They assumed that throwing money at the problem could rebuild the supply chain, ignoring the need for deep technical accumulation and efficiency in manufacturing. China's breakthrough is not a sudden eruption, but the conversion of profits earned by Western companies into R&D investment, and the conversion of the frustration of being blockaded into the motivation to overcome challenges. This proves that suppression through monopoly never wins. Only dedicated technological pursuit is the right way. The U.S. subsidy bubble will eventually be popped by China's practical achievements. 2. Europe's Chip Mirage Next, let's examine Europe's Chip Mirage, the EU's Chip Act, 
which took effect in 2023, invested 43 billion euros with the goal of securing a 20% global share by 2030. However, the 2025 audit report poured cold water on the goal, stating they were too far behind. Intel's German factory was cancelled, TSMC's joint venture in Dresden hasn't even laid a solid foundation, and the market share of European chip companies has actually fallen from 10% to 8%. Europe's problem is the same as the US's. They rely solely on policy-driven blood transfusions without the fierce dedication to tackle technical challenges. ASML Europe's pride can build the UV, but its core components rely on a global supply chain. When China restricted rare earth exports, ASML had to rush to stockpile. Meanwhile, our Changchun Institute of Optics, Fine Mechanics and Physics has successfully developed DUV optical lenses to an international standard, allowing us to operate independently. Huawei's 3D stacking technology is a major lesson for Europe. While European companies are still struggling with UV precision, Huawei bypassed the difficulty using chip stacking. It's like everyone else is competing over who has the thinnest pen, while Huawei used four ordinary pens to write a more exquisite character. This shift in thinking left European chip experts astonished. We were tied up by traditional technology. Europe's failure proves that technological competition cannot be won by slogans and funding alone. They held on to the obsession with EUV supremacy, but failed to see the new track of advanced packaging technology. China's dual-pronged breakthrough is essentially the wisdom of walking on multiple legs. You restrict the high-end, and I will stabilize the mid-range. You monopolize the equipment, and I will innovate the architecture. This flexible adaptability is precisely what is missing in European and American companies, destining their chip dreams to become a mirage. 3. The Collapse of the No EUV, No High-End Chip Myth the U.S. Semiconductor Industry Association once boasted. By 2032, the U.S.'s share of advanced chips will be 10 times that of China. Reality delivered a severe blow. The predicted 28% U.S. share is entirely propped up by TSMC and Samsung building factories in the U.S. But these foreign-funded enterprises are clear. U.S. factory construction is high-cost and inefficient, and the subsidies are merely pocket money. TSMC openly stated, To truly meet U.S. demand, we must still rely on our factories in Taiwan, China. In contrast, Huawei's 92% packaging yield completely crushes Intel's. Intel's Nova Lake chip uses similar technology, but its yield is only 58%, and it won't achieve stable supply until 2026. More astonishingly, Huawei's technology not only stacks chips but also reduces power consumption boosting mobile phone battery life by 20%, a feature that has even Apple reaching out for cooperation details. The U.S. blockade has also forced an unexpected outcome, the complete closing of China's chip supply chain loop. We used to rely on ASML for DUV, depending on the Netherlands' mood. Now, from lenses to light sources, we can build everything ourselves, and the cost of 28 nanometers chips is 30% lower than imports. The U.S. intended to isolate us with technological isolation, but inadvertently helped us establish an independent kingdom. The prediction by the U.S. Semiconductor Industry Association is nothing more than a self-deceiving lie. They only see the number of factories but miss the quality of technological innovation. Huawei's packaging breakthrough and the progress in domestic lithography machines have shattered the myth that you can't make high-end chips without EUV. When China turned that choking list into a challenge list, the collapse of U.S. technological hegemony began. The so-called 10x advantage will eventually become a 10x gap. In fact, there are precedents proving that blockades never stop innovation. In the 1980s, the U.S. forced Japan to sign the U.S.-Japan Semiconductor Agreement, nearly causing companies like Toshiba to collapse. However, Japan then shifted its focus to chip materials, and now 70% of the world's photoresist comes from Japan. China's current path is even broader, attacking both equipment and architecture, giving us more confidence than Japan had back then. The U.S. is now trapped in a vicious cycle of the harder the blockade, the faster the breakthrough. In 2023, 
they worked with Japan and the Netherlands to impose equipment controls. In 2025, they escalated DUV export restrictions, yet China's pace of technological advancement is accelerating. It's like a spring. The harder you press it, the higher it bounces. ASML CEO even admitted. Restrictions will only accelerate China's self-sufficiency, and we are losing our largest market. Global technology should naturally thrive through many hands building a tall fire. But the U.S. insists on erecting walls. They forgot that chips are not the exclusive property of any single country. Like the Internet in its early days, its development relied on global cooperation. China is now proving through technological breakthroughs that monopoly is a dead end and cooperation is the correct path. This is the right direction for global technological development. The U.S. blockade is identical to its suppression of Japan back then, but China's response is more comprehensive and proactive. We have not been limited to one aspect but have launched an offensive from multiple fronts, equipment, packaging, and materials, forming a three-dimensional breakthrough. This is not only a technological victory but also a victory in development philosophy. The global technology supply chain is symbiotic and should not be used as a tool to suppress others. If the U.S. does not wake up, it will eventually be confined by the wall it built. These two steps of breakthrough by domestic chips are not the end, but the starting point. In the future, we will continue to tackle EUV and perfect packaging technology to an even greater extent. Which area do you think will see the next breakthrough? Chip materials or lithography light sources? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Follow me for the latest updates on domestic technology. Thank you for reading, and see you next time.